Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Alamjeet Flora, founder of Pothos Events. Welcome to the Wednesday Talk Show. The Wednesday Talk Show is brought to you every Wednesday at six o'clock. This is especially for my new viewers. Hello, I know many of you have joined us newly, so welcome on this platform. So glad that you messaged me, and uh, you know you all are happy to be a part of our community. So thank you. Uh, today we are going to be talking about happiness. Happiness is searched by everyone, like we say, and our topic is also find your happiness. But should you really chase that? How do you go about it? You know, how seriously do you want to take this topic up on you and stress yourself out, or there is there a way out of this? We have an expert with us who's found her happiness for sure, and she's going to share with many of us today. So we have Neha Pan Tiwari. She's joining us from India. She is, uh, you know, a founder of Find Your Sorry, founder of Your Success Story, and she's also, you know, she's done her uh, her her coaching by Berkeley Institute, and she's here with us. She's touched over a twelve thousand lives, and now she is going to share so much with us. So please invite her over with a big cheer. Hi, Neha. Hi. Hi, Alanjeet. Good evening to one and all viewing us today, and it's a Good pleasure evening. to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, to have you, and you know, uh, talk a lot about your success story, of course, and your journey on, uh, you know, of finding your happiness. So, uh, Neha, to begin with, uh, let's uh, let's start with this this word happiness itself, you know, and how does someone find their happiness? All right, all right. So happiness. Let me start by telling you what happiness is all about, what it means, and why do we find it so difficult to attain at the first place? All right. Yeah. So happiness is a state of mind. It is a self-generated state of mind, which may or may not be influenced by external stimuli or external circumstances, for that matter. Now, as a state of mind. happiness is always present within us but is it as present as it is is it as accessible as yeah. it is present True. not really and do you know what the reason for that is the reason for that is our cluttered state of mind 50 to 80% of the times our mind is cluttered with negativity it is cluttered with negative memories it is cluttered with negative self talk it is cluttered with negative beliefs and thinking patterns and it is cluttered with negative or perhaps unresourceful emotions and therefore accessing the state of mind which we call happiness tends to be a challenge for all of us yeah so until you're able to work on yourself mentally and until you're able to kind of sort yourself mentally attaining happiness or accessing happiness tends to remain a challenge for all of us yeah very so happiness very... is definitely a state of mind yeah so you have to work on that mindset uh, continuously i think it's 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 a process like you never ending process like every day self check absolutely. absolutely it is an unending process the reason i'll tell you why is that so okay apart yeah. from not being you know one of the main reasons why we are not able to access happiness a it is the negativity and cluttered state of mind yeah. second is the very nature of happiness happiness yeah. is highly elusive by nature and that is the reason why we need to continuously chase it okay yeah. i mean seemingly so now when i say happiness is elusive what i essentially mean is that it is a fleeting reality it yeah. keeps shifting its shape and form with time right you know? so relative yeah yeah absolutely relative and yeah. it doesn't have a static timeline you know right. so you may think that i will be happy when i attain xyz in my life but right. by the time you have attained that xyz in your life your yes. mind is already <laughs> calibrating the next happiness goal and right. that is the reason why happiness tends to be a universal pursuit and a constant chase for us very true very true and yeah like we use the word chase also for happiness it's very strange 
it should be very internal and it should just be present like you said but somewhere we are just you know one thing after the other so what's you know your motivation to start uh, your company your success story sure so i have been in this space of positive psychology and personal development for a while now and okay. what i realized is that people understand that creating positive changes is very important it is critical for their success yeah. but not many are able to make those changes happen you know and uh, the reason for that is fairly simple these are not very easy changes to manifest it requires beyond time energy and effort it requires a certain um practice and expertise in your mindset right so while there is awareness while there is willingness the ability is missing and that is where i step in to plug that knowledge action gap now you know aranjit the ability may be missing for n number of reasons it could yeah. be that people do not know what they want in their life or yeah. perhaps they don't know how badly it is what they want in their life how much yeah. of life are they really willing to exchange to get what they want in their life True. or very very uh, critically speaking most of the people do not have the self belief yeah in the dormant powers or super powers which they have within themselves to make those changes happen yeah and i started your success story with a vision to reintroduce people to their own geniuses to reconnect them to their authentic self so they could make these changes possible and author their very own success story i mean yeah. that really was the whole idea behind starting your success story later on as i completed my positive psychology certification and i became a happiness coach, coach as well mm -hmm. uh, i wanted people to take away one very important aspect from me yeah and uh, that is i wanted people to understand the relationship between happiness and success for most people happiness comes after success you know so success yeah. is a precursor for happiness. happiness i wanted people to understand that it is happiness that is a precursor to success and not the other way around so these yeah. i think were the basic to underline motivating factors that led me to start your success story i agree when you're happy you are more productive so 100%. definitely it it adds uh, uh, to your going in that direction of success for sure so what what are the kind of you know clients that you have can you give us some examples where they struggled on their sure. path yeah so my clients range from 18 years old to oh, about okay. 60 years old so oh, sure. i have a variety of clients Huge. yeah yeah so you know there there are a lot of clients who are individuals Mm -hmm. there are a lot of clients who are professionals right and a lot of them are students as well so i work a lot as a youth mentor i work a lot with students i work a lot with their emotional intelligence with their personal development uh, i work with their changing self images and instilling clarity and confidence in them and that is when i also teach them about happiness that they don't have to look elsewhere to find it they need to find it within them by using their strengths right so students is one section the yeah. other section is professionals who are not very happy doing what they're doing where can they mend that part and then there are people who are empty nesters there are people who are slightly senior in in terms of their age there are people who are uh, at a transition phase in their lives right okay. women who have taken a a, a work break or there are ladies who are empty nesters who are in the age group of 45 and beyond yeah. i work with them and i kind of instill clarity and inner peace in them okay so maybe the common factors i don't know i'm just guessing could be self doubt insecurity you know unsureness of the future it must be difficult yes. for them to fathom yes yes yeah. that is a part of a lot of uh, issues that people face and that's a major part of it yeah 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 true and you know there is this saying that money can buy happiness you know <laughs> if you have lots of money so what's your take on that money can buy happiness and and there is a flip side to the coin as well you know alamjeet it is often said that people who do not know 
who don't think that money can buy happiness are probably people who don't know where to shop. So it is both the ways around, right? Right. So, I mean, let's look at it very objectively. Yeah. If you go to a mall and if you're able to spend money on fine dining with your family, mm -hmm. how do you feel about it? You feel great, right? Yeah. Or if you're able to buy that pair of shoe or that bag that you've been eyeing for such a long time. Or if you're able to buy those tickets to the vacation, which yeah. you and your family have been planning from years together. How do you feel about it? You feel elated. You feel yeah. excited. You feel mighty happy. And there are no two ways about that, right? Cool. Now, here is what my question to you and the viewers and listeners is. For how long do you think you can sustain this happiness, which you source by spending money? But yeah. how long do you think the spell of happiness will last? In True. case of a meal, the answer probably is till the next meal. Yeah. In case of a materialistic pleasure, it's probably 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. In case of a vacation, it probably is till, till the whole time the vacation lasts. And once the vacation ends, your happiness takes a dip, right? Yeah. True. So... So this is what it is about happiness. Yes. So to answer your question, really, money can buy you comfort. Money right. can buy you security, which may or may not lead you to a short-term happiness. Right. But when it comes to long-term happiness, external circumstances like money, power, fame, looks, your status yes. of education, only contribute to 10% of your long-term happiness. Wow. That's it. Only yeah. one-tenth of your happiness depends upon materialistic pleasures, so to say. What about the rest 90%? Mm. Rest 90% of your happiness depends upon how your brain processes the external reality, the yeah. internal communication that you have with yourself, You know, the kind True. of filters that you use to view your world. And yeah. I think that is one reason why often, you know, we hear people say that yeah. happiness is an inside job. This is pretty much what they mean. Yes, 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 yes. Because we, are, you know, we live in this world of uh, now social media is constant validations, uh, instant gratifications. Uh, you know, there has been a sense of, you know, how many likes, how many comments, you know, people are so carried away by that. It's like you know the parameters of uh, being happy is has changed uh, so much so uh, yeah i think uh, and how do you think this how can we work internally what is the internal job that someone can do sure so you know that brings us to the very important question or a very important discussion about how you can kind of grow your happiness on a mm. daily basis right how right. you can kind of work on your internal mindset and change it to an optimistic right. mindset, right? So one of the main things that you can do in order to shift your internal workings yeah. so that you know, you're able to look inwards and not outwards is by cultivating or inculcating what we call as habits of happiness, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what are these habits of happiness really? These yeah. are certain simple rituals, simple practices, certain actions and behaviors, which put you in a more resourceful state, yeah. which put you in a better frame of mind. So you're more engaged and you're able to make progress more easily. Right. What do they look like? Hmm. I'm not going to talk about a lot of them, but let me speak to you about at least three of them, which I find very, very important. Okay. And which are very easily doable. First okay. is physical exercise. When mm -hmm. I say physical exercise, what I essentially mean is physical movement of your body. Yeah. If you're able to uh, work out or move your body for a good about 20 minutes mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. then over a sustained period of time, you will experience a surge of a neurotransmitter, which yeah. is called as endorphin. And mm -hmm. what is endorphin? Endorphin is a natural mood lifter. Right. It's a natural mood lifter and it puts you in a more agile state. It puts yeah. you in a more alert state. 
it causes a connect or it solidifies the connection between behavior and reward and yes. therefore after a nice long walk you feel good good you know, yeah it out you feel really good you feel actually more active to take on more responsibility yes. right yes and that puts you in a better frame of mind that makes you happier all right yes. yeah that is one second uh, alamjeet is gratitude yes gratitude is one of the most potent tools to happiness mm. to change your internal environment okay right. why do i say that if you're able to recall three new things every day and mm. reason why for what you're grateful for what you're yeah. thankful for yeah you will be able to change your or retrain your mind from a place of pessimism to mm. a place of optimism right this is a research backed fact yeah. if you're able to recall three new things every day for three weeks which is about 21 days Yeah you will be able to rewire your brain wow to move from a place of pessimism to a place of optimism and how does that happen that mm-hmm. simply happens because your brain trains itself for optimism it trains yeah. itself to scan your world not for the negatives but for, for the, the positives first so that is how you grow in your happiness and that is how you cultivate a positive True. internal wiring or internal environment so third thing which i'm sure doesn't come as a surprise to anyone is meditation you yes. know now so much has been said about meditation we um, have lots of guests here on meditation exactly you know we we've actually spoken so much about meditation so i'm yeah. not going to go into details about that but if you're able to sit in a meditative position for 20 minutes every day then mm. over a sustained period of time you will notice your mm. brain will alter its physical structure right your amygdala will shrink and your hippocampus will optimize which okay. is to say that you will become more centered you yes. will become less reactive and more responsive yes. you know in the beginning when we spoke about happiness that it is we are not able to access happiness because of clutter and negativity in our head yeah meditation is the antidote for that because when you are centered and mm-hmm. when you are in a calmer state of mind you are able to access that positive state of mind much easier and much quicker than all I the agree. other things yeah i agree so meditation I... is yeah I'm a huge uh, meditation fan and I I recommend it to everyone. I know that it's not easy to sit with that thoughts, you know, you don't know what to do after close shutting your eyes, but just sit. That's all I'll tell everyone. So we have a question coming from Nisha. Sure. She's asking does these three habits of happiness vary between men and women? Nice question. Excellent question, Nisha. <laughs> So so far as the habits of happiness are concerned it is not just varying between men and women it mm. varies from individual to individual okay yeah. and also nisha it is not a guarantee that every happiness habit will work for you yeah you need to do a hit and trial to understand whether it is working for you or not now essentially speaking uh any happiness habit has to pass through these three filters what are these three filters it has to feel meaningful to you mm. it has to feel fun to you and it has to feel natural to you yeah. if it is not able to hold even one of them then that is not the happiness habit for you you need to figure out by hit and trial what is the other happiness habit which you can inculcate and develop more i hope yeah. that answers your question <laughs> yeah i i agree whenever we have to take a decision i think we need to you know when we are priorita- prioritizing our things you know when we are in a stuck situation i think these three parameters that you just mentioned really help you know so Absolutely. yeah Nish- nisha says thanks uh, thanks nisha for the question and you know any tips on being happy and being peaceful you know we are going through this pandemic and as you know you know it's uncertain every day the minute we think things are you know receding it's back with something else so that's a very relevant sure 
That's yeah. a very, very relevant question, Alamjeet. Yeah. I think uh, this is one question which is very, very pertinent and it applies to each one of us. And rightly, as you say, you know, given this unending and incessant pandemic-like situation from last almost two years, so to say now, you know. Yeah. So I have devised uh, what I call as a five-question strategy, which mm -hmm. will help you grow in your inner peace it will help you grow in your happiness quotient and it will also help you grow in your resilience. Okay? okay. So let me share it with your viewers today. I hope they benefit because you have a worldwide viewers here. Yes. So what is this five question strategy really? Ask yourself these five questions every day before you hit the bed mm -hmm. and try, um, Try committing to the task which is captured in these five questions to the extent possible. That is without draining yourself or without stretching and yeah. overdoing yourself. All right. Okay. So what are these five questions? Question number one. What is the one thing I did today to grow in my physical and mental strength? That's question number one. Number two. What is the one thing I did today to uplift my spirits? What is the one thing I did today to uplift the spirits of others around me? Hmm. Number four, what is the one new thing that I learned today? What is my value add for the day, so to say? Yeah. Number five, last but not the least, what is the one thing that I'm grateful for today? You yeah. know, if you're able to answer these five questions and if you're able to tick the task which is captured in these five questions on a sustainable basis for at least 21 days and yeah. optimally for a 66 day period, mm -hmm. you will be able to move from a place of unhappiness to a place of non-unhappiness. This yeah. is my promise to you. Wow. And I must specify like whatever you're suggesting is all about internal happiness. So this is going to be everlasting. So this Absolutely. is going to be like in you and it's going to be your personality. It's going to be everything for you. So these are very uh, core things that we're talking about because our topic is like find your happiness. It's like as if we're like going searching for one, but you know, we're trying to ask you to come, you know, closer to yourself. So that's, that's wonderful. And uh, Neha, uh, I would really like you to, you know, um, uh, tell our viewers some message from your end that we are on the end of the show now. So do you have any message for our viewers? Sure. So, you know, Alamjeet, first off, thank you so much for, uh, for today and for inviting me to your show. Yeah. Now, here is what I want all of you all to understand. Okay. Now, we've spoken about short term happiness. We've understood what long term happiness really sources from. But here is what I want you all to understand 40% of your happiness usually is sourced from these three things. Okay. Mm -hmm. One is your daily interactions, your relationships with others. Second is your daily engagements the actions which you do every day at yes. workplace or beyond. Third is growth and contribution. How much are you able to grow and what is the impact you're able to provide in your environment? Yeah. If you want to be happy on a long-term basis, simply start working on these three areas of focus. Instead of looking anywhere else, start focusing on these three areas and I promise you, you will experience a shift in your life, not just your physical life, but also your mental state. Yeah, true. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like on this platform, largely many mothers join and there are also, uh, of course, many men also. And I'm, I'm glad who they are going to take away so much today from this and stay happy, guys. That's what we want to say to you. So thank you, Neha. Thank you so much for today. And definitely we will see you again. See you. Thank you, thank Alamji. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Stay safe, be good, and stay happy always. Thank you so much, Neha. Thank you.
Hi, so we had Neha with us today and we sh- tried to show you the way towards your internal happiness. So please, you know, she has shared so many tips. I hope uh, you can inculcate those in your life and stay happy, guys. We want you to only smile in life and be very happy. So tomorrow, uh, next week, we are going to have someone who's an Instagram uh, person and she is into plants so if you want uh, to know how to nurture your plants and grow them beautifully in your house she is the girl so let's meet her she's sakshi we'll see her next week till then stay happy stay stay safe bye guys